Okay. Um, the title of the paper is Discriminative Training of CRF Models with Probably Submodular Constraints. Um, so in uh, computer vision, there's a large variety of problems that have a structured output space. Uh, for detection, for example, you have bounding boxes. For segmentation, you have uh, masks indicating class pixels. And for object or scene layout, you can have sets of related detections. Uh, these problems are often addressed with structured output SVMs applied to conditional random fields. Uh, I apologize for the amount of uh, formulas on this slide. I didn't make it, but we won't go into them, so don't worry. <laughs> um, so a core technique for um, structured output prediction is the discriminative training of graphical models. Um, the first part of the slide is the formulas for training a graphical model. It's an optimization um, equation. And there are learn learning methods such as SSVM, structured output SVMs, that can train these models, but they uh, require certain constraints that are highlighted in red here to ensure that the uh, uh, model is tractable during inference. Um, let's see. So, okay, in uh, structured prediction, there's typically three sources of uh, prediction error. There's learning error due to the finite sample size, there's model error resulting from the chosen model class, and there's inference error resulting from suboptimal inference. Uh, this paper shows that there is a trade-off between model error and inf inference error. Um, previous works have chosen to eliminate inference error altogether at the expense of model error. Uh, this paper shows that you can relax the assumption of having no inference error. Um, then we go to the next slide. So, as I said, for a structured output problem, you need to enforce constraints on model parameters to um, ensure tractability during inference. And Kolmogorov and Zabi have shown that the inference problem is tractable even only if the pairwise potentials in a CRF are submodular. That's the, um, the last equation that you see here. Previous works um, have um, proposed sufficient but not ne necessary con constraints for ensuring this submodularity that you need. Uh, you can see these constraints here. And so the paper that I'm presenting here um, shows that you can relax the constraints to make them necessary and sufficient. Um, and this way, you basically increase the model capacity without um, losing during inference. Um, then you can even um, relax the constraints even further. Um, and you can say that instead of that the weights of the model have to have a certain sign, like in the previous constraints, that the inner product of the weights have to have the correct sign. Um, and Lastly, the constraints can be released even further to ensure sub submodularity on the training data uh, and not on the test data. So in every step, the constraints are relaxed and the model capacity increases because of this. Um, let's see. So um, I will skip this slide, and here we see some results on a segmentation benchmark. Uh, on the x-axis, you see the different constraint sets. Um, they are relaxed every time, and as you can see, the model capacity increases, which leads to higher accuracy on this benchmark. Um, this translates also into qual qualitatively results. Um, the segmentations get better the more that you um, relax the constraints. So finally, the conclusions. Um, there is discriminative training of conditional random fields. It requires tractability constraints on the model. The existing literature provides sufficient but not necess ne necessary constraints to ensure tractability for all possible inputs. But this paper shows that, it is, um, that there are necessary and sufficient constraints for guaranteed tractability for all possible images, but you can also even relax the constraints further to have a probabilistic guarantee um, that decreases the model error and with high probability the inference error does not increase on the test set.
Um, if you have any questions about this work, I encourage you to contact the authors or have a look at the project webpage. Thank you.